Hello everyone, you're now with me, Ruben Gomez, for the Nightline at 11.30pm. Let's move on to the news. Avoid getting involved in any racial activities that can upset the unity and harmony in the community. Chief Minister Dato' Petinggi Abang Johari Tun Openg reminded this to all Sarawakians through his special address in conjunction with the 2020 Christmas celebrations. Abang Johari also called on Sarawakians to strengthen their commitment and contribute to the harmony and state development in any capacity. The future is bright for Sarawak. As long as we do not know squander it all, the GPS government strives to be inclusive as no one should be left behind. We must work together to develop Sarawak into a digitalized economy, leveraging on our rich natural resources and human talent. Regarding Christmas celebrations, he said this year's celebrations are not like the celebrations of previous years, but with the restrictions amid the COVID-19 pandemic. This time around, you may not be able to have full services in churches, organize Christmas parade or visit friends and relatives on Christmas Day, all because of our need to restrict our movement contain the spread of COVID-19 infection. He added that COVID-19 has massively affected Sarawak's economy, especially its tourism industry. Businesses, big and small, were also adversely impacted and they have struggled to stay afloat, which led to the job terminations of many workers. For this reason, Abang Johari said the Sarawak government has worked hard to help those affected through multiple care packages under Bantuan Khas Sarawak Kusayang, which involved over 2.6 billion ringgit in funds. However, he is confident that Sarawak is still on the right track to achieve a high income and developed status come 2030. This is not a hollow confidence because our economic fundamentals are strong our policy structured and realigned after COVID-19, while our political stability is the envy of others. The recent signing of the Commercial Settlement Agreement CSA with Personask gives us added confidence that our state can derive more revenue from our oil and gas resources Besides the mere 5% royalty that Sarawak used to receive on average 700 to 800 million ringgit a year. Saya dan keluarga mengucapkan selamat hari Christmas kepada saudara dan saudari yang merayakan hari Christmas dan selamat tahun baru 2021 kepada semua rakyat negeri Sarawak. Focus will be given to the skills development of every child in Sarawak. Special needs children will be assisted in mastering their skills so as to prepare them for school. As of December 23rd, a total of 110 children had registered at a one-stop early intervention centre or known as OSEIC. According to Dato Sri Fatima, of the total 54 children are autistic, 17 are experiencing delayed speech, 10 are experiencing delayed global development, 5 are with Down syndrome and 1 has impaired hearing. As a star, the Minister of Welfare, Community Wellbeing, Women, Family and Childhood Development, Dato Sri Fatima Abdullah said parents are not required to pay any fee this year. However, starting next year, charges will be imposed. Fatima said a fee of 50 ringgit will be charged for a weekly session every month, while 100 ringgit will be charged for a twice weekly session per month. With the Sarawak One Stop Early Intervention Centre, she hoped that more parents would come forward to get consultation, diagnosis, intervention and support for their children with special needs. The state government has set aside 2 million ringgit for the centre next year. Such an allocation will enable the centre to continue providing services for children with autism, Down syndrome and learning disabilities. 
Among the facilities at the one-stop center are activity rooms, rehabilitation rooms, intervention rooms, a snozzle room, and a room for consultation and diagnosis. Rawat Minister of Tourism, Arts and Culture, Dr. Abdul Karim Rahman Hamza, is confident that the tourism industry will show drastic improvements through the national tourism policy for 2020 to 2030. This can only be achieved through planning and certain trust that was set by Malaysia's Tourism Ministry. Karim said that in the middle of 2020, the state government has launched the Sarawak Economic Action Plan for 2020 to 2035, a period of 15 years, with one of the components being a focus on the tourism industry. He said his ministry has made meticulous and detailed planning so that the action plan is able to bring most impact to all industry players by 2035. The national tourism policy will be implemented through six main strategic trusts, including transformation of governance, creating an inclusive tourism investment zone and intensifying digitalization of the tourism sector. In addition, the core trust involving enriching tourist experience and satisfaction, strengthening commitment to sustainable tourism and increasing the human capital capacity of all tourism subsectors. Transforming the, pub, the public transportation system is a part of the Sarawak government's main agenda, turning Sarawak into a high-income and developed state by 2030. In order to realise this vision, the Sarawak government, under the leadership of Chief Minister Datuk Patinggi Abang Johari Tun Openg, has established the Sarawak Metro. Incorporated in February 2018, Sarawak Metro Executive Officer Masli Mustafa said the establishment of the Sarawak Economic Development Corporation's child company is aimed at developing and pioneering the Kuching Urban Transportation System, or KUTS. KUTS developed as a Sarawak Metro as an ART system, a hybrid crossover between buses, cars, trains and trams that utilise a special lane and not a steel track like the LRT, which will indirectly save on cost and construction time. This system is replacing the LRT, which was originally announced as the latest modern public transportation system in Sarawak. The ART will be powered by hydrogen fuel cells in line with the Sarawak government's aim to develop a hydrogen economy and realise the green hydrogen agenda, making Sarawak a producer of green hydrogen in the region. Other than that, the ART system will have three transports with a maximum capacity of 300 passengers and an average speed of 35 km an hour and capable of reaching maximum speeds of 70 km an hour. Right, welcome back. Yang Dipertuan Agong Al Sultan Abdullah Riayatuddin Al Mustafa Billah Shah granted an audience to the United Arab Emirates UAE Minister of Health and Prevention, Dr. Abdurrahman Muhammad Al Wais, at the Emirates Palace, Abu Dhabi. The meeting, among others, discussed the UAE government's intention to contribute the COVID 19 vaccine to Malaysia for clinical studies in the country. Istana Negara Comptroller of the Royal Household, Dato Ahmad Fadil Shamsuddin, in a statement said it was part of the itinerary of Al Sultan Abdullah's five day special visit to Abu Dhabi. Ahmad Fadil said His Majesty, however, stated that several processes needed to be taken into account to know the feasibility of clinical studies in Malaysia. 
Ahmad Fadil added the intention by UAE to donate COVID-19 vaccines to Malaysia at a special visit by Al Sultan Abdullah. There reflected the strong and close bilateral relationship between the two countries. He further said it also shows that Malaysia and the UAE are working together in the fight against COVID-19. His Majesty is scheduled to return home on December 25th. The additional expenditure of 20 billion ringgit that was approved through the government financing of COVID-19 for Amendment Bill 2020 is to enable the government to purchase vaccines for Malaysians. Finance Minister Tengku Dato Sri Zafrul Abdul Aziz said that it will also be channeled as additional funds for frontliners. Saya ingin mengambil peluang mengucapkan terima kasih kepada semua ahli yang berhormat yang telah sebulat suara menyokong RUU ini. Kelulusan ini amat diperlukan dalam usaha memerangi COVID-19 serta menjamin keselamatan rakyat. Dalam kehangatan perbahasan yang telah berlangsung, saya amat menghargai pandangan-pandangan dan cadangan ahli-ahli yang berhormat. Kerajaan mengambil maklum kesemuanya dan akan bersedia menambah bantuan jika perlu demi rakyat, perniagaan dan ekonomi negara. He said this when presenting the 34th Implementation and Coordination Unit between National Agency Laksana report through his Facebook page. It is the final project of the Prihatin Rakyat Economic Stimulus Package, Prihatin National Economic Recovery Plan Penjana, and Kita Prihatin Economic Stimulus Package, Kita Prihatin, issued this year. Tengku Zafro said the government is also prepared to increase aid if there is a need in the future in the interests of the people, businesses and the national economy. The Health Ministry is monitoring the new COVID-19 mutation that was detected in Sabah from various angles, including its infectivity rate and impact on the people. The new A701B mutation was detected after the ministry conducted tests on 60 samples from the Benteng LD cluster in Sabah. Mutasi ya. Jadi kita telah pun mengesan mutasi di 614G pada bulan Ogos. Dan uh, kita kesan di Negeri Kedah itu kluster Sibaganga. Uh, kita juga kesan uh, di uh, Johor Bahru dan juga di Negeri Sabah. Jadi yang kita uh, uh, sering jalankan ujian dan ujian daripada uh, 60 uh, daripada 60 sampel daripada uh, kluster benteng lah ada tu kita telah dengan pasti juga ada uh, mutasi iaitu mutasi A701B. Uh, tetapi kita masih tak pasti sama ada ada impak fizikal sama ada rasa boleh kapitan itu tinggi According to him, new mutations were also detected in several countries, including South Africa, Australia, the Netherlands and Singapore. On Monday, Dr. Nohisham said a new variant with the scientific name of VUI 2020-01 had spread fast throughout the United Kingdom with a high infection rate. Elaborating, Dr. Nohisham said the ministry had previously identified the existence of the D614G mutation in Kedah involving the Sevanganga cluster as well as in Johor and Sabah. Lukan dalam kajian makmal menunjukkan D614 ada keberjangkitan lebih kurang 10 kali. Dan hari ini kita lihat BUI ataupun variant under investigation 2020, 2012, uh, uh, nombor 1 iaitu di UK juga dikatakan uh, keboleh jangkitan lebih kurang 70%. Uh, inilah kita uh, sentiasa uh, memantau sama ada virus ni bermutasi dan juga kesan mutasi tersebut uh, untuk kita uh, jalankan. Malaysia has reached the grim milestone of 100,000 total COVID-19 cases on Christmas Eve. The Ministry of Health said that the country recorded a total of 1,581 new cases. Health Director General Tan Sri Dr. Norhisham Abdungah in a statement said Malaysia's cumulative cases now stand at 100,318 cases.
Selangor continues to record the most infections with 491 cases, with a total of 375 cases detected from close contact tracing and existing clusters. The federal territory of Kuala Lumpur comes second with 379 cases, while Sabah recorded 249 cases today. Meanwhile, Sarawak today recorded two new COVID-19 cases in Miri. In a statement, Sarawak State Disaster Management Committee said both of the cases have been classified as import A cases. Contact tracing for both cases is currently being undertaken by the committee. The community also informed that one case has recovered from the disease and discharged from Sarawak General Hospital. This leaves nine cases still in treatment, with three more in Cebu Hospital and four in Miri Hospital. All right, welcome back. All Islamic cemeteries in Sarawak need to be endowed to ensure their management can be carried out more effectively. According to Assistant Minister in the Chief Minister's Department, Islamic Affairs and DBKU, Dr. Dr. Abdul Rahman Junaidi, so far there remained many Islamic burial grounds that have yet to be endowed to the Sarawak Islamic Council. Out of the 343 Islamic cemeteries in Sarawak, only 124 of them have been endowed. He revealed the matter when speaking at the groundbreaking ceremony of the Samariang Muslim Cemetery Complex in Kuching. He, who is also Assistant Minister of Utility, Water Supply, explained that every Islamic cemetery also needs its own management committee. He further said the Samariang Muslim Cemetery Complex is crucial in pioneering the management of Muslim cemeteries across the state, besides setting an example for Fardu Kifayah management to the community. The Sarawak Narcotics Criminal Investigation Department has successfully busted a drug distribution syndicate in an operation on Jalan Temple in Kuching. Three suspects, including a middle-aged woman, have been arrested in the 5pm operation. Sarawak Deputy Police Commissioner Dato Fisol Saleh said the operation team also seized an estimated 4.1 kilograms of marijuana worth 10,397 ringgit. Daripada kita punya uh, narkotik yang telah menahan seorang lelaki uh, bertempat di harapan sebuah restoran eh, di uh, Temple Street, Kuching yang mana seorang lelaki kita telah tahan dan setelah pemeriksaan dibuat pada badan ters, uh, lelaki tersebut kita dapati uh, dua bungkusan eh, dua bungkusan yang apabila pemeriksaan dibuat didapati dalam bungkusan tersebut Terdi, uh, terdapat kelu, uh, dan kelu, uh, ketulan mampat yang kita syaki dadah jenis ganja. Yeah. Following the finding, the suspect then brought to the operation team to his home, which led to the uncovering of four transparent plastic bags containing around 42.4 grams of marijuana. After interrogating the first suspect, the team then arrested another male suspect at a house in Taman Pelita Jaya. An inspection of the house led to the finding of 1.1 kilograms of marijuana. Fisol also revealed that all the marijuana was believed to have been obtained from overseas using a courier service. Kita memohon kepada semua pengenali-pengenali untuk prihatin bersama-sama bila ada tengok bungkusan-bungkusan begini tidak boleh dihantar, kan? Alamat tak lengkap balik di sini cepat-cepat membumbungi kita. All suspects have been remanded for six days for further investigation under Section 39B and 39A, bracket 1, of the Dangerous Drugs Act, 1952. The Eastern Sabah Security Command, ESCOM, arrested two men for possessing a total of 10,160 packs of contraband cigarettes of various brands worth over 149,000 ringgit. The raid happened at a house in Kampong Hidayat Batu Empat in Tawau. Its commander, Dato Ahmad Fuad, said the suspects aged 50 and 55 were detained in the 2.30 a.m. raid. Both the suspects and seized unpaid duty items were brought to the Tawau District Police Office. 
Ahmad Fuad said that the case is being investigated under Section 135 Bracket 1 Bracket D of the Customs Acts 1967. He further said that cooperation between security forces will be enhanced from time to time to curb drug syndicates and cross-border crimes. Christmas is upon us again. Like all festive seasons, Christmas is a time of joy and laughter, a favourite time of year for loved ones to gather and reminisce about the good old times while making a lot of new memories. This year will surely be one that we will not soon forget, even as the COVID-19 pandemic continues to keep many of us apart from our loved ones. Christmas is a family affair where we get to spend quality time with loved ones in the comfort of our own homes. However, without a doubt, this year will be a very different kind of Christmas due to the COVID-19 pandemic. But for Sorakians, what was evident is the spirit of hope and love. Sebab kan uh, pandemic COVID-19, so kami orang just berkumpul gathering with families, uh, the closest fam families, yeah. Uh, so, uh, si ada sambut besar-besar gila lah tahun tu. Uh, uh, yalah, si boleh uh, berkumpul ramai-ramai and then uh, si boleh uh, kunjung-mengunjung buat masa tu. So, kita just hati-hati aja lah uh, untuk putuskan rantaian COVID-19 tu. Saya harap lah uh, bagi tahun yang akan datang, 2021, uh, kita dapat uh, ni vaksin cepat, cepat, cepat mungkin lah untuk Malaysia ni untuk apa ni uh, keselamatan nyawa di negara kita ini sendiri juga uh, lagi pun uh, supaya aktiviti semua dapat dibuka semula uh, bukan saja untuk uh, apa ni kesihatan rakyat dan juga untuk uh, ni ekonomi negara. Lah. This year will surely be one that we will not soon forget. We can still make this a special Christmas for the right reasons while sticking to the true spirit of the season. Being with family, at the end of the day, is what matters most. Oh, oi! Right. Well, everyone, Christmas is here. As the COVID-19 have changed many aspects of life this year, Christmas will not be the same. I know most of us have a bad time, bad year, some lose their loved one, lose their family member due to the pandemic, and most of all, lose their job. But stay strong. A new year, a new chapter will begin soon. Merry Christmas, everyone. Ruben Gomez, anytime, anywhere. Got Christmas Eve to catch up. See ya.